it's monday and that's what happens to be the day that i like to talk about monsters hello and welcome to monster mondays i am jeff arbuckle co-host of the weekly podcast film seizure that you can catch every wednesday at filmseizure.com or at a number of podcast providers online this week's movie is a bit of a different one while yes there are many times on this show when it's been easy for me to grab a godzilla flick or a king kong movie or one of the entries from the Universal Classic Monster Cycle, I do try to pick something that kind of steps outside of those boundaries from time to time. I did movies like Jurassic Park or Blair Witch Project, both movies that most probably wouldn't think would kind of fit the bill of the monster part of the title of the show. However, I'm guessing that if you saw a giant T-Rex coming towards you to eat you, you might think to call it a monster. And ghosty witches, I'm going to call that a monster too. The point that I'm trying to make is that I don't always want to just stick strictly to your vampires and giant lizards or monkeys and what have you. I, I like to kind of stretch out a little bit, and this week's feature, Under the Skin, definitely stretches out a little bit. This is a science fiction film that features an alien posing as a human woman, played by Scarlett Johansson, who observes and collects males. Now, the film was the most recent of only three films made by British director Jonathan Glazer. I have not seen his second movie, Birth, which uh, stars Nicole Kidman, but I know him best for his 2000 black comedy masterpiece, Sexy Beast, starring Ray Winstone and Ben Kingsley. That's a movie I accidentally saw in the theater. And there's a story behind that, but I accidentally saw it, and it was one of the most wonderful, inadvertent experiences I had ever had in a theater. Now, despite the comedic tone that Sexy Beast ultimately has, Glazer kind of specializes in truly deep stuff. Birth is about Kidman's dead husband being reincarnated as a 10-year-old boy, and under the skin? Well, this is dark and minimal in how it characterizes our lead and some of the situations, but it has lots of intriguing, almost artistic moments. Glazer's career has mostly been in shorter formats. Um, more recently, he's done short films, but he's done some pretty significant music videos as well. The one he probably should get the most credit for is for Jamiroquai's Virtual Insanity, which won the MTV Video Music Award for Video of the Year. And while I don't remember the song at all, I definitely remember the look of JK dancing in the ever-moving and shifting futuristic room. He also did the video for Radiohead's Karma Police, which uh, may or may not, um, or maybe at least looks like for the most part from our perspective, uh, that the video consists of mostly a single sh continual shot. So. Before I even saw Sexy Beast, Jonathan Glazer was a part of my life. Uh, Under the Skin is based on a novel that came out in the year 2000 by Michelle Faber. Now, Glazer had secured the rights to this novel shortly after making Sexy Beast, but opted to make Birth first. A script was sent to Glazer, but it was a fairly close adaptation. And Glazer was not interested in just filming the author's book. Instead, he kind of wanted to make the book into a film instead. The first pass at a new story was a pretty high-budget affair starring Brad Pitt as one of two visiting aliens posing as humans. However, that was thrown out for uh, Glazer to instead opt to tell the story from a soul alien's perspective and having the entire focus be paid directly to her. The elaborate effect scenes were completely whittled away and a very small, very intimate, yet very disturbing film would rise out of that script. It also featured a few different themes. The novel was a dark satire on sexism, big business, factory farming, environmental stuff, and even rape. Glazer's film would keep some of those bigger ideas and themes lying under the surface, but he also didn't actually intend on all the themes that people find in the film to really come through. 
he didn't set out to make a movie that commented on gender or gender uh, specific roles or the power that each gender may have but there's a significant theme of feminism throughout and kind of turns the concept of rape culture on its head to where men who you know those who don't often have to worry about you know being uh kind of pursued by a sexual predator especially when they're alone at night are the ones who are mostly preyed upon in this movie one of the most easily discussed concepts in the film is sex johansson is playing an overtly sexual being she dresses kind of sexy at least in a normal way uh she flirts she lures she kind of devours Maybe a great way to describe her type of character is to call her by her Marvel Cinematic Universe moniker. She's a Black Widow. Uh, She's overly desired and should be desirable, but despite being a real-life sex symbol, most don't even know that Johansson made this movie in which she appears nude in multiple scenes. And that's because this movie uses sex differently than most media would. It's not here to entice. It's kind of cold and almost clinical. And we'll talk a little bit more about that cold clinical side to her character a little bit later. The movie opens silent and dark as a pinpoint of light starts to grow in size and intensity. Eerie music begins to play more loudly and more all-encompassing. Shapes form into round objects as voices are heard saying, at first, incomprehensible things. Soon the voices start saying random words. And then we see an eyeball. Uh, It's like something was forming or being created. From there, we go to a very dark road where we ride with a mysterious motorcyclist. The biker pulls off the road near a fairly plain white van, and the biker collects a woman's dead body from off the road and loads it into the back of this van. The body is eventually taken to a plain white room and undressed by Scarlett Johansson, known only as the female in the cast. Um, She takes the dead woman's clothing, puts it on, and goes out into the city, in that very van that that woman was loaded into at the beginning. She uh, goes to a mall to buy more clothes and a little bit of makeup, and she drives through the city and watches men. She finds a man and pulls over to ask him for directions. The first direct attempt to pick up a guy fails because he is walking to meet someone. The next attempt fails because the man has family in the area. The third attempt is seemingly successful. The man accepts a lift home from the strange woman who seems kindly and maybe a little bit flirtatious, Uh, but it doesn't appear that she does anything more than to take him home as promised. A couple of more attempts are made until she finds someone who doesn't have a girlfriend and is receptive to her charms. She takes him to her place, which is an oddly all black room. As she walks ahead of him, stripping off clothing one piece at a time, which makes him follow suit, no pun intended. Uh, As she continues to lead him to what he thinks is the promise of sex with Scarlett Johansson, he he soon begins to submerge into a strange black goo in the floor until he is utterly submerged and disappears. The female then retraces her steps back gets dressed again and goes back out into the streets looking for the next guy. The next day, she goes to a beach and meets a swimmer from the Czech Republic who says that he likes the idea of being someplace that's pretty much nowhere. It seems she is going to easily pick up the man, but the swimmer is distracted by a couple who are in trouble. The woman is looking like she's trying to save this couple's dog who ventured too far out to sea. And the husband of this woman is trying to save her. The swimmer is trying to help both of them. It's a pretty harrowing scene because you don't really know what's happening or what everyone is doing. You're just simply witnessing it. All the while, the female just watches the scene play out like we do. The swimmer only is able to save the man. They come ashore, but the 
husband, the man who was trying to save his wife, goes back out into the sea to try to save her in a desperate attempt. Uh, he seemingly dies by being dragged under in the undertow. The swimmer is exhausted and face down on the shore where the female picks up a rock and bashes him in the back of the head. As she pulls him to her van, we see her pass by the crying child of the couple who drowned in the rough seas. She pays absolutely no attention to the desperate baby. That night, the biker from the beginning of the film comes to clean up the swimmer's tent that he had set up on the shore, and the baby is still on the shore, but the man pays no attention to it. When the female attempts to collect another man, she turns back when she thinks the man is seen by his friends. She walks away, but runs into a group of partying women in a bachelorette party and is taken to a loud club. However, there she does eventually run into the man that she was originally following and finding out that he is indeed alone, they end up spending the evening together. He ends up in the black goo in her black room. We get to see what's in the black goo. It's mostly the soundless dark void. A previous victim is in there and the uh, first victim's insides are basically sucked out of him, leaving only his skin floating there. Um, a slurry of his organs and blood appear to be flowing towards a red light. Where that goes, we're not told. We don't know. A third guy is picked up and he's really into the female. The whole car ride, uh, he is uh, basically telling her how beautiful he thinks she is. It seems that she easily feeds that guy to her people and then is given what appears to be some sort of visual inspection by one of the male biker aliens. At this point, maybe the most memorable sequence of the movie takes place. She sees a guy walking alone to the store late at night. And when she picks up the guy and offers him a ride to the grocery store, the man is revealed to be disfigured from tumors on his face. This is not an actor in makeup. Glazer actually found a man with this condition. Uh, the female agrees to drive the man to the store, and she discovers that uh, he has these abnormalities in his appearance, but she treats him really kindly. She learns that he goes to the store at night to not be seen, and he has no friends. And she lets him look at her because you know, she, she noticed that he was trying to catch a, a look at her because she's quite beautiful. I mean, she's Scarlett Johansson. Uh, but she also says that he can touch her if he wants. It's both sweet and you get this kind of sinking feeling that it might also be cruel because you worry that she's actually just teasing him to take him back and put him in the goo. But something else actually happens. She does indeed take him to the goo, but after seeing... Uh, how he looks. He's very frail um, and he has that abnormal uh, tumors and stuff all around his face and she gets her a, a look at herself in a mirror and after kind of really taking in what she's seeing and, what, and what's going on she decides to let the guy go. However he is ultimately captured by one of the biker aliens and she ends up being pursued by more of the biker guys. Our cold and detached visitor might have grown something of a conscience. The female then retreats to the Scottish Highlands and she walks into a small town where she tries to blend in first by going to a diner and ordering food. But because she's an alien, she can't eat people food. After throwing up the single bite that she tried, she leaves the diner. She ultimately gets on a bus and a man asks if she needs help, if she's, you know, in trouble of some sort. He ends up taking her to his home where she starts to see how people live. And, uh, you know, she's, um, you know, she observes a comedy show on TV that's mostly strange behavior followed by uproarious laughter. Um, she even recognizes that the guy is tapping his foot to music on the radio while he's doing dishes and so she kind of learns to tap along to the beat with her hand um, and later 
he gives her a room to sleep in and she examines her naked body. It seems like she might be checking for injuries or what we'll see later, tears in her skin, but it also comes across as almost an act of self-discovery. She's seeing what her victims are seeing, maybe for the first time, and she's really kind of starting to take in this kind of human experience. Now, the man that she's staying with seems to treat her nicely, at least at first. He gives her a place to stay, he carries her over a deep puddle, which is kind of sweet, and he also is very nicely and kindly easing her nerves when they go into a castle that they visit together. Um, this is, you know, kind of a nice guy, but in the long run, he is also maybe expecting this to be something a little bit more than what it could possibly be. He wants to make love to her, but that's a completely alien concept to her, you know, on the account of her being an alien and all. But it starts off well, and she seems to be receptive to it and learning from it, but the actual act of penetrative sex freaks her out and she's worried about her well her nether region um it's really maybe kind of this allegory to you know the discovery of sex and and all the oddity and all the weirdness that goes into that but um it seems as though also one of the bikers that's chasing after is starting to get closer to where she is too the next morning, the female flees into a wooded area nearby, and she finds a shelter in the woods where she sleeps for a little while, but she wakes up to someone rubbing her legs and trying to molest her. She escapes and finds a logging truck, and she tries getting inside to take the vehicle, but she doesn't have the keys. The driver, uh, who is spotting that somebody got into his truck, starts approaching, and it turns out that he was the same guy that was trying to molest her previously. He catches her and tries raping her, and in the process, he rips her skin, revealing a slick black surface under her human skin. The trucker at that point runs off seemingly scared, and the female removes uh, and kind of reveals her true self by removing her skin. And it's this completely black, shiny, featureless being. As she looks at her human disguise looking back at her, the trucker sneaks up behind her and douses her with gasoline and lights her on fire. She burns to death with her ashes rising into the air, but then falling back to earth with the snow. Now let's get to my three things I like about Under the Skin. First, there is a minimalism to this film that is very strange. What's strange about it is that this is one of those examples of a very disturbing movie that you are totally engrossed in and exhilarated by. There are many things that are obviously disturbing, like the young baby left alone on the beach to basically die in nature slowly and sadly, or her bashing the swimmer's head with a rock or when she becomes the victim and hunted in the third act. Um, however, what's really disturbing about this movie is how quiet it is. We're seeing things mostly from the female's perspective. She's here. She has a job to do. She does it professionally and coldly. Scarlett Johansson is rarely a cold and distant character in any movie, but in this movie here, she turns the personality on and off like a switch. To borrow from the title, she really kind of gets under your skin and you feel very squeamish about her. In fact, an attempted carjacking happens to her in one part of this movie by a group of toughs in uh, you know, one night during the, the scene right before she picks up the disfigured guy. The female does not react. She seems almost to be trying to figure out why they are doing what they're doing before she just kind of calmly drives away from them. It's too detached to feel right. It would be easy for me to say, as a guy attracted to Scarlett Johansson, 
seeing Scarlett Johansson lure men to their doom by way of her wiles and charms is disturbing and scary, but it's more than that. I mentioned earlier that she is not playing this overtly sexual creature in a sexual way. She is gorgeous, yes. She is sexy, yes. But she's also not playing that up. This is not a glamorous role where she's wearing the sexiest dresses and always having her hair perfectly done and makeup applied to the nines. She's wearing lipstick, but also a lot of normal everyday walking the streets of Glasgow clothing. Um, Her hair is nothing special. She's special because we can see she's still quite pretty And of course, she's still Scarlett Johansson, but it's this cold detachment and lack of personality that makes her, well, inhuman, which, well, I guess that's the point because she's an alien. However, it's a push and pull on you because it's disturbing, but you're also kind of enraptured by this character. It also helps that you are with her throughout most of this movie. You only have her to hold on to, so it helps you be even more drawn in by her. Now, second, the score for this film is stunning. Uh, It was composed by Micah Levi, and it's a busy, downright alien score. Uh, It tickles your nerves as if it, again, to borrow from the title, uh, is trying to get under your skin. The primary instrument used for the score is a uh, viola. Um, And uh, basically, Levi and music producer Peter Rayburn first sought out the most identifiable and human sounds of the instrument and then altered that pitch and tempo to turn it into an uncomfortable listen. It really makes for what Levi called physical alarming and hot in terms of its sound. In other words, it has a visceral quality to it. It should be pointed out that I think that tickled tempo and pitch of the viola notes uh, used here influenced horror ever since. The same type of sounds are used in horror trailers all the time now. Uh, It's something that now registers fear for the listener instantly. It's kind of like how the psycho theme changed uh, horror scores forever after that. Now third, what I maybe appreciate most about Under the Skin is how little I understand it. It makes this movie intriguing on a whole other level. Who are these creatures? What is their purpose? Where do they, why did they come here? Uh, why do they apparently feed from our insides? How many of them are there? Are they invaders? What's the black goo? Why do, pe- why do guys with hard-ons walk into the goo, but Scarlett Johansson doesn't? Uh, does it lead to another dimension? Do these aliens have consciences? Um, you know, what are the bikers in relation to the female? What was that one biker doing when he was staring at the female and walking around her, inspecting her in a circle? The answer to all of these questions is, I don't know, and I don't think I care. We are observing her observing us. It almost becomes a little bit of a reflection. Considering a lot of this film was made with stolen shots with hidden cameras, we are seeing real people doing real things. It was only after the shots were made that Glazer got the permission to use the footage from the people that ended up in the scene. Again, I think it plays up to the disturbing nature of the movie. That observation of us while we observe the watcher is maybe a little creepy or maybe kind of like, I don't know, kind of like being stared back from the void. Um, I don't know. But it sets you on edge wondering what the hell is going on. This is a visually interesting and thematically fascinating film. It might not be for everyone, but I think generally speaking, those who see it are at least as intrigued by it as I was. That wraps up this week's Monster Mondays. You can catch new episodes of Monster Mondays each Monday at filmseizure.com. And don't forget to follow us uh, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram by just searching for Film Seizure. And there you can um, also subscribe to Film Seizure uh, to get both the Film Seizure podcast and Monster Mondays at your favorite podcast providers as well as YouTube. You can also check out my website, bmovieanima.com, to read new articles every Friday morning. 
And next time, I've got another skinwalker type of creature to talk about. I'll talk about the fun and engaging mystery of the video game adaptation of Werewolves Within. Until next week, stay spooky. <laughs>